Welcome everyone, Christine here on Serious Gaming with a quick look at Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail, brought to you by the same people that made Ultimate General Gettysburg about the American Civil War Battle of Gettysburg and Ultimate General Civil War about the Civil War in its entirety and the major battles of it. So this uh, takes place, there are two campaigns, Rule the Waves, which is a British campaign, I suppose about the Napoleonic Warfare, or at least part of it, and then the American War of Independence. Now, what's interesting about this, there was a poll on their forum about what they should do next after Ultimate General Civil War. And that poll contained options of like the Revolutionary War and the Napoleonic Wars. So what they've chosen here by looks of it is to do both. So you have the initial campaign, which is for new players, uh, the British campaign, Rule the Waves, and then Don't Tread on Me, which is the American campaign, the American Independence campaign, which is for experienced players. So let's go with Rule the Waves. I think the mission... For generations, yeah. my family has been sailed up the seas since before my grandfather's time. It has been our destiny. And now it is mine. One day I went sailing and found that my old boat had sprung a small leak. Now this gives you stats. Um, I imagine you can unlock these kind of upgrades later on, but for now these are just basically your initial bonuses. So repair cost. Um, the second one, hold on, is upgrades cost. And then took a risk, so luck, 10% uh, success, uh, success chance. I'm going to go with repair cost because... I repaired the hole with driftwood I found nearby. At 12, my uncle made me an apprentice aboard his ship. Standing between land and sea, I felt like a man for the first time. Anticipating a life on the open sea, I dreamed of battle and glory on the horizons. But life is difficult in the Royal Navy. Far removed from dreams of glory. Remembering my father's lessons, I worked hard to impress the crew. In time, I was made a midshipman, beginning new responsibilities. Alright, so midshipman. 5% um, crew training speed, okay. 5% casualties uh, replenish after battle. This is a late game bonus because this is based on Ultimate General Civil War, right? So a lot of these things, you know, outside of the things that affect ships, uh, a lot of these things uh, seem familiar. By the way, the Americans start with a different set of bonuses that you can choose from, by the looks of it. Uh, so anyway, so you have hiring veterans, 5% uh, casualties replenishment, and 5% percent crew training speed um reducing the veteran hiring cost is more going to be more important early on than later on later on your um y you will want later on to get the casualty replenishment and then when you're looking at crew training speed i don't know if training actually works but yeah well i'll have to decide on that i i would need to see it in action to make a conclusion on that but for now i'm going to go with what i know and i'm going to go with uh, veteran cost. Morale is important, so I focused on keeping the men's spirits high. We were forged together in the crucible of battle. For gallantry, I was recommended for promotion to the rank of lieutenant. But first, I must pass the lieutenant's exam. I was summoned before a board of captains. After a lengthy examination, they asked me what I thought the Navy's greatest strength was. So you get various options, reputation per battle. The reputation is a resource that you use to level up and buy units, all that kind of stuff. So you have reputation. Um, you have a minus 5% for hiring officers. Officers shouldn't be too expensive. So this is not necessarily the most important thing. Uh, the fleet minus 10% requirement for access to the next uh, level mm, could be possibly to the next level for um, for upgrades that is or reputation it's hard to say I, I guess i probably will go for either officers or reputation one reputation it's just one reputation but if i could i'll just reputation, go reputation i responded 
other nations fear us, and we can use this to our advantage. They nodded their heads in assent, then asked me for my appraisal of the Navy's current strategic situation. This is basically your difficulty level, so I'm gonna go with medium, because I've played Ultimate General, I've played uh, both Gettysburg and Civil War quite a bit, and I never felt the need to play on like a high difficulty, so to speak. They added that, that later, it wasn't necessarily in uh, at the beginning. Um, the reason behind it is these kind of games, like there's a lot of focus, um, the, or there was a huge focus on Ultimate General and Gettysburg about, oh, uh, the AI is the thing that is quite unique and interesting and it actually react, it's, a dy it's more of a dynamic AI than just static. I mean, you play something like Total War, right? In Total War, 90% of battles is just get your units in proper formation, hurl them at the enemy, and you win. Um, and you don't do anything particularly clever unless you're exploiting something. Like, most of the time when you're doing something quote-unquote clever, you're basically exploiting, exploiting some kind of behavior or some kind of thing uh, in the game that confers you an advantage. Be it either luring enemies to attack choke points, even though no sensible person would ever do something like that, or... Uh, say, for instance, in Warhammer 2, uh, you're, uh, you're sending your hero to get as many units engaged with that hero as possible. That kind of stuff. Anyway. Uh, and waste their strength. But anyway. So difficulty, I'm just going to go with medium. This basically confers no advantage to you or the enemy. You can go with... Truthfully, the British Navy would be something like this. <laughs> but that's kind of stretching it, actually. The British Navy was very powerful it was not invincible let's put it like that i mean the american war of independence was won by the americans and french all that because the british navy was overtaxed i mean it's basically it's not declined that's laughable but uh yeah i think this is, i mean it's a reasonable option our fleet is admirable but our enemies are always looking for an advantage to use against us an old, grey-haired captain asked me about my skill in the organization of amphibious operations. I've read many books about tactics and strategy, and I am confident in my ability to command. The board applauded my answers and took a moment to reach their consensus. Congratulations, sir, they said. You have just made Lieutenant. So the default option is Horatio Nelson, one of the famous pictures about him. Uh, and these are the option, the bonuses you have. So for instance, I have repair cost over here, and I have reputation. So you have Admiralty, Crew, Technology, Officers, Shipbuilding, and Luck. Alright, let's begin. The, cult, uh, the politics, of course, are so mean that private people would be ashamed to act in the same way. <laughs> Admiral Horatio Nelson. He wasn't wrong. All right. Spain guards the mouth of the San Juan River with a strategically placed fortification under the command of Captain General of Guatemala. Securing the entrance to the river opens the route to Lake Nicaragua and will bring all these rich lands under the authority of Britain and His Majesty King George III. Alright, but we need to secure that battery and assaulting it head on is suicidal. At, at least by sea, I did, that's what I mean. Frontal attack seems suicidal, but it seems to, uh, that we have no other option available. By frontal assault, it means disembark here and then assault and not like try and get into a cannon fight with the fort that's that is suicidal we you will have to secure the fishing village and then march uphill seize the fort and disable the coastal batteries the spaniards will do their best to cancel your plans so you need to act swiftly and fast okay be aware of the enemy coastal guns they can obliterate your assault troops all right Ooh, spotted spain has a naval patrol in there our ship has been intercepted by the corvettes uh, Galga and Mercedes. Their opening volleys raked the bridge. The captain is badly wounded and the first lieutenant is missing. The situation is grim. 
Our troop ships follow behind, they will avoid that naval battle and wait for its resolution. Without our pr uh, protection, they will become easy prizes for the Spaniards. HMS uh, Ceres, a light uh, armed brig, has sailed up to join us in the fight. The crew is desperate for a uh, leader who can bring the ship through its trial by fire. You have no choice but to take command. All right, so we have what? A frigate against corvettes? That's the real suicide right there. So, bring the cannons. Okay, we have we have three ways of shooting. We have round shot, grape shot, and chain shot. Now, I am going to put full sail. Okay, we got reinforcements coming in. One of the things to say here, though, is that I kind of actually want to give it a go at boarding actions, because. Um, So go ahead and take that boarding action. Um, go, go, go. I want to capture these ships. I don't have to give a crap about the crews here. There we go. And besides, I have more crews there. All right. I want to drop anchor. Just an idea. Alright, um... Actually, I might want to disengage there. So, full sails. The naval battle is practically won, that's not the issue. Let me 
me see if I can uh, try and take it down, actually. It would be nice to capture it. Let's put it like that. Alright, so the troop... Uh, uh, the troop transports have arrived. Just gonna select them, send them over here. Alright, try and... I mean, I know I can capture this ship. There we go. Close. Yep, there we go. Hooked it in. Very nice. We got ourselves a nice solid prize. Right, and we have about 600 plus men on these uh, ships to disembark. I'm not quite sold on uh, on the naval combat itself, to be quite honest. I mean, it works, it functions. I just don't know if it's going to be quite as solid as... Um, All right, let's try and take down those gun, uh, those guns. Come on, open fire. Gunboat diplomacy at its very finest. That's what this is. Actually, let me drop anchor over there. At its full sail. But I'm guessing the wind is... Uh, yeah. You can see it on this ship, actually. Alright, let's... Uh, send those... Those are the guys are falling back right there. Quite nice combined arms. This just feels like a 3D version of a uh, Ultimate General, really. The ground battle aspect, at least. Smaller scale. That's fine. I mean, one of the things people mentioned when it came to the idea of making the Revolution American Revolutionary War with regards to Ultimate General is that it wouldn't really fit in many of the battles of that particular conflict, which were generally smaller scale than the kind of stuff that Ultimate General had done, so okay. I'm disembarking the last of my Marines. I'm going to charge. The way melee works is that you have a charge, it's got the cooldown timer. Now my guys against the Pathetic Garrison, yeah, who do you think is gonna win that? 
Just gonna bring them ashore though. We're gonna get the munitions. Now, with regards to the way the gameplay actually functions, uh, you've got morale for your uh, the ground uh, combat functions. You've got cover, which reduces the damage your units will take. So these guys have none over here. And then you've got morale, and you, then you've got condition. And of course, you've also got ammunition to worry about. So supply, represented by supply. Now I'm trying to get, let me actually put them in run. I just want to get these guys quickly there. Now you don't want to fight your troops to exhaustion. I mean you can, some missions, some battles in Ultimate General you actually have to in order to really have a good chance of winning them. At least that's the tactic I found. Kind of against what the developers intended, but I'm like, hey, if I can f win the battle by exhausting my troops, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Charge right there, boys. Okay, so I'm going to go through the woods. Now I'm kind of hoping that there are no extra units there. Now the issue here... How is this a suicide mission? Yeah, okay. Yeah, some extra troops coming out of the... Uh, some extra troops uh, coming out of the forest. This is a crucial thing. So you get units that surrender. And you can impress them in your service. In this one. Yeah. Interesting one. Alright, they're falling back. They don't stand a chance against the Royal Marines. Alright, I'm just going to move the ship. Alright, so he's pretty bloody exhausted. Controls, most of the line controls are pretty much the same. Actually, I'm, I don't need... Right, I'll bring more of my marines forward. Uh, ship will have to stop. I'm not pretty eager to throw my frigate against those cannons just yet. Reminds me of the Battle of Toulon, where... Napoleon, yes, Napoleon made his name because he basically said, hey, we can bring our cannons on this fortified position and the British Navy will have to flee because they are not going to get into a cannon <laughs> into a cannon fight with uh, our ground batteries. And they didn't. They ran. They abandoned Toulon. And that's how Napoleon got command of the Army of Italy. For his tactic there.
All right, they're uh, they're routing over there. I was a bit worried because they did have quite a few men in that battery, but they're probably quite bad in terms of their own combat expertise. All right, so my frigate is still shooting. Maybe it will actually hit something. Or is it shooting? Because it's not. Alright. Just a couple of seconds, really. Yeah, there we go. There's the cannon shots. Alright, just gonna speed it up, and that will be the battle. A bit bloodier than it should have been, but victory. And you don't have to care about the casualties in the, this battle. I don't think it affects you in any shape, uh, shape or form in the campaign. It does affect you in the American campaign, how you do in the first mission. But not in the British one, by the looks of it. Because I did beat this mission. Probably will be playing a lot of missions at the fastest speed. It is a slow game, and I do like it for it. Being able to slow down at certain moments, enjoying the battle, giving proper commands, that kind of stuff. So yeah, I mean, this is the point, right? Um, so I lost, uh, yeah, fleet casualties. I had five ships, I lost one ship. I did capture two enemy ships, so maybe that will make up for it, let's see. And so that is the first mission of the British campaign. Uh, it's pretty much just a naval you know, it, it has a naval component, but it's pretty much still civil war. Been promoted captain, given command of brig and an old sloop. I dreamed of staying on HMS Richmond, but do so I would have had to remain a lieutenant. Promotion is the better choice, right? We are anchored in the mouth of the San Juan River, and there we wait. We have had no news from home, no news from Jamaica, no news at all. There is a saying, during war, no news is good news, but soon we will need to replenish the food and run for run for the men. The rumors of half rations may become reality in a matter of weeks. Okay. Them needs a captain. So I need to buy weapons, uh, weapons, officers, guns, ships, you name it. Need to up get upgrades as well. All these kind of things. And then there's, um, what do they call this? Well, research, whatever. Anyway, so you have research. And the way it works is you get six, uh, six in this, you get, and then you get access to that, and then you get eight, and then you get access to advanced. There's a lot of things here. And by that, uh, I suppose I should take the fact that we are probably going to get, um, quite a few <laughs> we're gonna get quite a few missions now the the thing about it though all right so i have 900 sea service muskets 28 aligned mortars and so on and so forth now if i sold a good number of my uh if i sold a good number of my muskets how much would that grant me okay now would be enough but that's the kind of decision you would want to make later I mean, that's, this is one of the things, like, in missions, you're not just fighting for the sake of being able to win the battle. Like, obviously, that's the main goal, right? But the most important thing for you as a player is going to be able, especially early missions, but not just that, is going to be fighting to secure resources. So guns, artillery is a big deal, right? Getting, getting your hands on artillery is going to be a significant uh, benefit to you as a player. Uh, if you want to add this to the fleet, it's going to cost you 15 fucking reputation points. It's just pretty bloody expensive. And it's just a six rate sloop of war. Now, and I get a seven freight sloop and a seven freight brig. So not exactly great, are they? <laughs> the music. And I have 200 guys with land uh pattern 78 musket as uh as my uh units and then we get the sea servants muskets as well very good i could sell those sell enough of those and buy myself a ship uh, a good a good enough ship and put the captain on that 
Oh, where is sign? Okay, so I have Horatio N Nelson. He is all right. But yeah, that's um, that's uh, the option. Those are your options there in terms of customization. So you, you do have a gun store, you have a ship store, that kind of stuff. It would be nice if, you know, you the, the trophies you got, you could be able to, you know, sell. That would be nice to actually be able to sell. I do only have one mission here, and it's, what exactly is it? I guess it's, uh, it's a naval mission. It's, it's not a lot of money either. So those guns, yeah, I could sell those guns, get, get that. It might be worth, it might not be. But I'd have to decide on that uh, later. But anyway, um, it's nice. It really is. With one major exception, the engine is... <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Unity, just looking at it. I mean, beyond the the way it looks, it really reminds me of Empire Total War. But beyond that, um, it, the options menu, it's, it's not great, is it? It really isn't a great... And the performance isn't as great as it could be, but hey, that's what Unity gets you, and I'm pretty certain that this is Unity. Kostin here, signing off, thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for more. I don't know if I should do a full playthrough of this, I'll decide on that later on.